And I'm here with Claire Janish from South Africa. Claire is something of a hero. I'd like to introduce her if I may. <laughs> Claire is uh, somewhat famous for her work with the Biomimicry International. And Claire flies all over the world teaching and doing conferences on biomimicry. And actually, if you search on Claire Janish Biomimicry, you'll find lots of material, including her TED Talk. <laughs> I'm glad to follow a genius because it really brings home what I want to talk about today. I want to talk about how love can inspire genius. How many of you are really keen to live? Yay! It's an amazing statement she says at the end there. She says, teach me again. How do I learn to live here on this planet? How do I learn to live here in a way that is well adapted to life on this earth? And how do I learn to live here in a way that creates conditions conducive to life? Now, it's a very simple statement and yet it's so powerful because we suddenly realize how many things that we are doing and the way that we're living that isn't doing that. I mean, how many of you are knowing for sure that what you're doing every day in your life, what your work you're doing and what things that you use every day in your life are creating conditions conducive to life? How many of you are concerned that they're not? So the thing is, I'm going to be telling you about my story because biomimicry has got so much depth to it that I really just wanted to introduce you to what learning biomimicry is about. When I first was introduced to biomimicry, I went on an expedition in the Amazon rainforest. And it just completely changed the way I understood and viewed the natural world and changed the way I practiced in my field and changed the way I was, I changed my whole field and my profession. And I would just like you to recognize that as you enter into this world of biomimicry, it's almost as exciting as going on an expedition in the Amazon rainforest. And I got so inspired being there that I decided I really wanted to make biomimicry my, my whole focus of my life. And I was so lucky to be one of the first group of 16 students that have been on the first two year total and utterly revolutionizing the way we learn. Um, this is the biomimicry course that's been going for two years. It's so radical that it can't even get accredited as a master's degree. That got me excited. Then I studied it for two years to be a biomimicry professional and I went, oh my goodness, this is so much more than I thought was possible. And then I was asked to help teach the next two year program and I went, oh my goodness, this is even more than I thought was possible. And in that learning process, I had to wrap my head around this amazing field and its potential. So then I started to teach biomimicry. My hero is not Spider-Man, it's the spider itself. This is probably the superhero of superheroes in the world of chemical engineering. This guy makes a material that's stronger than bulletproof vests, Kevlar. He spins a web that is so extraordinary, so cross-linked, that is stronger than steel. Uh, five times stronger than steel gram per gram. Two times more flexible than nylon. The recipe exists. People are studying it. They're figuring out how to make equivalent of spider silk now by mimicking the recipe, by following the lessons from the superhero. We can make materials at ambient temperature and pressure that are as functional as titanium. Isn't that exciting? People are starting to talk about closing loops from the linear to the circular economy. An extraordinary thinking going into that, how we can generate more and more value by decoupling resource use from economic growth. I said, well, if we could have a course in Amazon rainforest, can't we have one here in South Africa? And I had this vision of Janine Benya sitting around a campfire in Africa and telling the story of biomimicry and sharing her wisdom, but relating it to us where we live and our, our local geniuses. And through a number of amazing coincidences, the head of the Biomimicry Institute is actually from Zimbabwe and her parents are by pure, I don't even know how it happened. I live in a farm in the KwaZulu Natal Midlands and her parents are in an old age home just nearby. And so she came to visit them and spoke to me and we talk, talked about this dream of running biomimicry courses in South Africa and expanding into Africa. We're going to integrate biomimicry into degrees like engineering at university level. We're going to integrate it into schools so from a very young age we can learn how to make things, how to live in ways that create conduc conditions conducive to life. This is one of the greatest biomimics that I know of, Dr. John Todd, who figured out how to clean water by mimicking wetlands. And we brought him to Africa's greatest wetland, the Okavango. And he was learning and we were learning from him because we needed to start doing. This is the state of our rivers in South Africa. And this, I decided, was one of the most important areas for us to actually start doing biomimicry. 
field of biomimicry, where we look to how nature moves water, distributes water, stores water, cleans water, and seeing if we can take those principles and apply them in our engineering environment so that we can actually respect water and keep it filled with life and clean in everything that we do. I'm Claire from Biomimicry South Africa, and I am for the love of water. How can you not love water when it's everything that gives you life, that gives all of this earth life? It is probably the most important and most valued and most wonderful thing on this planet. And the pulse of life that we see within the movement of water, we see within the movement of creatures in water, we even see it in the growth of organisms that grow with water, we see it in the movement of our galaxy. That same pulse of life is in our heart, it's in our heartbeat. And our heart is in fact shaped exactly like that amazing flow form, the two um, spiraling muscles of the heart pumping the blood in this amazing flow form, this very powerful flow form. Now what's evident in your heartbeat is you have a big beat and you have a little beat, a big beat and a little beat. And when you are in a state of peace, and love, they found that the ratio of the big beat to the little beat is in the golden ratio. And so, as you feel that power of love and inspiration, that powerful creative force is actually created as a vortex through your bloodstream and you, it's implosive, powerful, inspirational force of love. And when we are for the love of water, and we're looking for the flow in water, that we can inspire our own genius by, by taking that love that we have for water and looking at genius itself and our love of, of nature and how we can combine our inspiration of creative genius, our love of nature, the love of water, to create innovative and genius solutions to our water challenges. At the most profoundly poetic level, the very space that we're trying to save on this planet, which is nature itself or biodiversity, has the answers for how we can. And the more we practice biomimicry, the more we learn how we can make a world, a built world, designed world by humans that is beneficial to these systems because we emulate and copy their shapes, their recipes and their systems. That on its own is worth the adventure of learning biomimicry.